needs to happen. I already, I made uh, Kathleen a host so she can help with the letting people in and those things. So that's been taken care of. Father, we turn our focus to you. We put our eyes on you, every distraction. In fact, this is a great reminder of exactly what we need to talk about today, that when there's distractions, when there's this thing that needs to be dealt with, oh, and this doesn't seem to be working out all that way we thought it should, and this is supposed to look this way, you know, Kim's supposed to do this, and and Hannah's got this, and not, but still, our focus needs to be on you, and sometimes it's, hey, our kid's supposed to be acting this way, oh, school's supposed to be going this way, what am I going to do about my job, every distraction whew, that wants to take our eyes off of you, Father, we look to you, and I thank you for your word, not just the written word. I thank you for the written word, which is our plumb line, but I thank you for the living word. We cannot live without your voice. I thank you for how Jesus came and he gave us these words. He said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So this morning, we look to you. We look to the manna the fresh manna that's coming down today. Lord, I relinquish <laughs> by everything, even pre pre preconceived notions of what you want to speak before you lays everything that you've been showing me. And Lord, as you already know, I said, well, what do you want to, what do you want to get out there at this last hour, this last session? Because it all doesn't fit. So I, I yield it all to you and I yield myself to you in this moment. And I ask you to speak. For your servants are listening. We are your servants and we are listening. Thank you, Father. Listen, John 4, let's just get right on in here. John 4, 23 and 24, this is Jesus speaking out of the NIV translation. He said this, yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshipers must worship in the spirit and in truth. Last week, we talked about to transcend that the only way forward is through worship. Only way forward is through worship. And I, I have to tell you, somehow, by the power of the Holy Spirit in this time together, I believe that God is going to help each of us transcend in our thinking about what worship is and what worship isn't. I know this, that the image that I saw in my thinking today regarding this whole topic was that of a, a ship leaving the port. And I realized that the ship is worship. Worship, in, this, in the days going forward, I pray that you will be on that vessel, that you will be on the vessel that worships him in spirit and in truth. In spirit and in truth, in a way that your spirit man connects to him. I'm not talking about worship so you can check it off the list. I believe that there are some, perhaps many, hearing this, that you think that you have connected in worship, but honestly, you have not ever, or maybe it's a distant memory, or maybe you're in a dry season, it just feels so long ago, of what it feels like to connect with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit intimately, which happens in this place of true worship. And again, this isn't, hear me, because I even already hear, I come against offense. I come against religious thinking. I come against pretense right now. In the name of Jesus, I cast you aside. You will not block us from hearing. The message, that what I'm saying to you, I'm not saying because, oh, I have this all figured out and I always nail it. I'm speaking from a place of journeying. I'm speaking from an awareness that I have had all these seasons. I have experienced both the times of like worship, meaning I'm maybe in a service and I'm singing along and I'm, you know, I'm kind of connecting and I'm feeling something or I'm distracted and I'm worried about many things. I heard the Lord use that phrase with me this week in considering speaking again about worship. 
He said, Martha, Martha, for you are worried and distracted about many things. We, Mary has chosen the one thing, and that was to sit at his feet. So many of you know that, that uh, story of the sisters. And I would tell you that you are the sisters. So often we want to pick one and we want to identify, well, I'm more of a Martha, I'm more of a Mary. No, no, you are both. You are Mary and you are Martha. Within me is my soul and my spirit. And my soul wants to get busy about serving and making things right. My soul wants to make this, uh, this problem here with like uh, how we normally, uh, Kim handles it and the, the distraction of all that. I need to fix it. But Mary, the spirit in me is saying, listen, don't worry about all that. Just get in front of me. Just get hearing me and begin to speak my words. And that's just here in this moment, but it shows up in all kinds of places. Shows up when we're worried about our children and their future or their loved, our loved ones, a spouse, family members, our city, our nation, our finances, our health, the things that we are worried about, things that we're concerned about. And I'm not saying those things don't matter. Hear me, because this is where the rubber is going to meet the road today for us. What I'm not saying is those things don't matter. I'm telling you that when you get in the presence of God, when you get before the throne and you latch in and you get connected to the, that moment with him, all those other things get answered. Your answers, your results are awaiting you in the throne room. Oh, Lord, come. Come by your spirit right now. Speak, oh God. Reveal, release, empower. I just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit coming right now. Thank you, Lord. Beginning to determine what order in which he wants to move today. Because he is seeking who those who will worship him in spirit and in truth, in reality, not in external acts, not in... Some like, let me do this because if I do this, then okay, wait, then everything should be okay. No, because he's worthy. Worthy is the lamb. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. He is the victor and he has given us the victory. And the only way to fully transcend from where we are to where we ought to be, from what we're living in to what he has purchased for us, is to lock in in worshiping him. What that physically looks like for each of us will vary. But within, come on, Lord, open our eyes. Thank you, Father. I hear the Lord <laughs> saying, blind eyes are being opened right now. Our areas of our heart where we have not seen the reality, the veil is torn. Listen, the veil has been torn. The thing that veiled us from being able to see into the holy of holies. was torn from the top to the bottom on the day that Jesus was crucified. And that's a, a, in the scriptures, we see a picture of the temple. Father, help me because I feel like I need to slow down a minute here. In the Bible, we get a description and the overview of the, of the temple, both the one in the wilderness that they built had three spaces. It had the outer court, lots of people, a lot of action, lots of activity. Then it had an inner court within that, where there were less, there were priests and other people doing the activities that, that were ordained for them to do. And then within that was the Holy of Holies. And this is a much bigger um, topic. And I don't know, I don't want to commit yet, but um, we'll be beginning to meet again in two weeks. We're going to have two weeks off. FYI, it's the last one here. We're going to reconvene in July 8th for another four weeks. I, I don't know yet, but it has struck me that perhaps we're going to move into the, the picture of the tabernacle, the temple, the, the tabernacle in the wilderness, the tabernacle in Jerusalem, and the tabernacle within. But the overview on that right now is for understanding purposes is within that holy of holies, that center third place is where the Ark of the Covenant was kept. The presence of God dwelt there. We see that in the one in the wilderness that was, they would take down, it would move, they would move it about. 
And then we see it in Jerusalem, of course, on a bigger scale and all the things, but it was still three, the outer court, the inner court, and the most holy place or the holy of holies. And in that place, that's where God dwelt. And the only one allowed in that place was the high priest once a year who would go in with the blood of the lamb, the sacrifice for the whole nation, all the people and for himself. And, oh, I want to get into this. So maybe this will be something we talk about going forward. But I was just reading this week uh, how the garment that he wore had a pomegranate and a bell at the bottom of the skirt. The hem of the garment had a pomegranate and a bell, a pomegranate and a bell. And I, there's so much that could be said about that. Although I, I've never thought of what I thought of this week or what the Holy Spirit said. Uh, part of that, they say that the the, I'll jump to that in a second, but the high priest, <coughs> excuse me, bless me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> um, the high priest also had like a rope tied to him because when he would go in there, the, the, it was a possibility they could die because, you're, you know, you, you, there's just the atonement had to be received. Anyways, so they would have the rope. So if they stopped hearing the bells, the movement of the bells, they could pull him out. Anyways, we'll talk about that. But this week, I began to think about those bells in light of what God was showing me. I believe he began to show me that entering in would be the sound of worship. You would hear those bells. You would hear the bells. See, he had to come into the Holy of Holies. And I believe, again, I'm not going to stick on this. I believe that God is giving us an, another picture of you got to get into that place. You know, the set, the outer court is where everybody's at. The inner court, there's a lot of activity. There's a lot of uh preaching of the word. There's a lot of discussions. There's a lot of people serving God. There's all these things, right? But to go in and we can go in. See, it used to be that only the high priest came out, but Jesus, when he gave himself on the cross, he paid the final sacrifice, the blood of the lamb, the final lamb was slain for all humankind. And it allows now for us to come in that physically, they say that the veil there was a veil from that space was torn from the top to the bottom it was very high this is not humanly done anyways again i have a, a sense we'll be getting into some of that in the future it opened a way a way has been opened and we now know through the the word of god that it says that we can come boldly into the throne room in times of need to obtain mercy it what's the throne room it's where god is that inner sanctum was where God dwelt. But now we are able to go in all the way in the spirit to him. He's made a way for us. You have to understand that these block it, these blockages have been there. They were set up, but they're now removed. But that does not mean that you're entering. That does not mean that just everybody goes in. And I will tell you this. I don't believe that anybody gets out alive. Come on, someone needs to write I'm not going to get out alive. Someone needs to remember that what I'm saying, because I tell you, nobody's getting out alive. When you go in, let me tell you something, to the throne room, when you get before him, some of your flesh is going to die. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because in his presence, when you fully get in front of God, let me tell you something. One, You'll know it. You'll know it. Two, those worries and concerns all of a sudden will take a back seat to him, to what you're seeing. And that may be seeing in your mind, feeling in your heart. Come on. God it wants us to see. Three years ago, 2020. before the pandemic, after God told me to lay down my titles, come on, I'm just going to, I'm going to call it what it is today. Okay. I need you to hear something because I believe God showed me something this morning. He to call me to lay down my titles. That might not sound like a big deal to you, but you know, lay down yours. <laughs> titles, salary, way of thinking in so many ways. And I know I'm not the only one. My husband and I talked about this this morning. Like, what was this about? And I believe that it was about true worship. 
fully grasping. We need to know who are we really worshiping. I'm telling you, there are many counterfeits. There are many counterfeits. I don't have this in front of me. I have, I, you know, once again, the Lord, I got all these scriptures, Lord, you had me pull out or that you taught me through, but that one I didn't pull out, but there's a, a, a in not the book of John, not the gospel of John, but in the letters, there's a, a phraseology of, and there are many antichrists, that the antichrist is coming. And there are many already here. I'm telling you, the Antichrist, I've explained this before, let me say it again. Yes, an Antichrist, the, the, the Antichrist that will come on the scene and there's all that. But I'm referring to, there's a mention by Paul that many Antichrists are already here. Antichrist, like antipasta, it's instead of. So anti can be against and anti can be instead of this prefix, okay? So Antichrist, there's a lot of against Christ and we see that everywhere, right? Everywhere. But there's also the instead of Christ. And I believe there's a religious instead of Christ. And we worship. But really, it's not Jesus we worship. Can someone handle the truth like I can today? Because I just got to hear the truth. When we come into worship, oh, I'm concerned because I've done, I did this for so long, not knowing. And I, I just hear me. We want, we don't want to miss it. Anybody saying, I don't want to miss the boat. I don't want to miss the time of my visitation. Do you understand? Jesus showed up on the scene and the very people who were speaking his word, teaching his word, they all missed it. Do you hear me? They all missed it. In fact, they crucified him. They crucified the word that they had been preaching, protecting. It became their identity. Come on, go back and look at the, the Jewish uh, the Sadducees and Pharisees, like they, this was their identity. And some of us have this Christian identity. Hear me now, because I'm coming against it in the name of Jesus. I'm coming for you, you lying antichrist that has caused us to walk in Christianity, calling ourselves Christians, living a Christian life, but never having the visitation or having it here and there, but staying being kept back. We will not be kept back. We will enter in, coming into worship, coming into with all of our burdens and our cares and all of our ideas and our dreams and coming and worshiping and singing songs that I actually love. But it's not the same as worship when we're talking about how I feel and what God is doing for me and you are doing this for me and you've done this and you make me victorious. And I love these songs, hear me, because there's a place for them. But I'm trying to talk about the kind of worship that causes you to see him now. Seize him on the throne. That, because when you do, because when you do, you will respond appropriately. So how do I respond? The Lord has been leading, been leading in these recent weeks just into a deeper understanding of worship. I want to look, although it wasn't my plan, I want to look at Revelation 4. First of all, let me just tell you this. In Revelation 3, although I'm not going to read it all, I want you to know that we see Jesus. Actually, is it 2 and 3? Yeah. Yeah, 2 and 3. We see Jesus after he's been crucified, buried, risen, and, and ascended, speaking to John, speaking to John, as John is exiled, can you hear me? Can someone say being exiled, being set aside is not a problem? In fact, for some of us, it was exactly what we needed. Some of us need to understand. I'm just going to tell you right now, God, thank you for setting me aside. Thank you for pulling me aside. Thank you for causing me to feel betrayed and, and, and set aside by no one. The devil is a liar. God has been trying to get some of you if not all of you, to pull aside. And many of you refused, and it's okay because he caused circumstances to come and sideline you. Mm. Paul, John was in exile, and yet he had a revelation, an encounter with Jesus that we're still like going, like it's the biggest one ever, isn't it? It's literally the book of Revelation. It's, it's, it's 
it was present for him. It was some things that would be worked out in history, some, many of which have been. It's current and present for you and me. And it's a future reality on the world scene. You got to see some things you can only see in exile. Some things you won't ever see until all those other things, all the other things. John was probably doing an incredible job, right, in his ministry. Was he not? I mean, before this, if they decided to exile him and get him onto Patmos, the island of Pat Patmos, away from everybody, he was doing a good job. <laughs> he was preaching the gospel. He was doing all the things. So it would seem oddly inconvenient and not the Lord's will for him to be in exile on Patmos. But we would not have this vision. We would not have, not just a vision, listen, we would not have understanding of what's coming. We would not have these words to lead us and guide us. Not just we, but every believer throughout history from this time forward has this because there was a man who was exiled, taken out of the things that he thought was important, the things that he, I'm sure, thought I should be doing. Anyways, if you have resisted the exile that God has planned for your life, I pray that you will resist no longer that you will resist no longer, that you will accept the shift. I started to say this three years ago, 2020, February, whatever date, I think it was the 7th or something of 2020, I spoke at Rock Conference. Or reminded me this morning. And I had to, you know, it's funny because you're like, wait, what? So February 2020, so I'm, I'm all 2021, 2022. Okay, this is 2023. So this is after three years. And now we're into after the fact. And the Lord said, yes, I spoke a word and it went in like the three days in the grave. And then Jesus rose, right? He said that word went into the, to the soil of those who were listening of their hearts for three years. But now you are living in the days of the resurrected Christ, right? Jesus resurrected. And there's some things that were spoken. And one of the overarching things that I shared in that message, which by the way, Anyways, just, it was a lot of things going on that no one could have known. And I was saying things that God was speaking that's like, what is this? And it was, the main thing was this though, that he, that it would be a time that we would cross over into 2020, which meaning the decade of the twenties, right? We were leaving the one decade into the next. And that in this decade, that the veil would be lifted off our eyes and that we would see what we could not see before. And that we would begin to see the heavenly realm. I had had visions at the beginning of that year of angels being released and dispatched and set in order. And this, the, this morning, the Lord began to remind me how he had shown me all this like heavenly activity. And then we went into COVID and all the things there. But I'm telling you, this is where we are. Your eyes must be opened. John's eyes were opened to the invisible realm. And through worship, God is saying, if you will come to me, if you will come and worship me in spirit and in truth, come and find me, I will show you the invisible realm. I will show you what's really happening. Because let me just tell you something. We're all caught up on what's going on around us, in us, to us, and even through us, that we are missing what's actually happening in the invisible realm. And it's time for us to engage and become a part of the throne room people. It's time for us to step in. I shared with my husband that on occasion, many occasion, through worship in, uh, now in private worship, I, again, I use music, I find my way. I will see, all of a sudden, it's like no longer about what I'm thinking about and I'm now like seeing Jesus in my heart and understanding things and he's showing me things and I begin to see him and all my concerns, I see how they fit into this picture. 
My answers are found in the invisible realm because you're so busy trying to put a puzzle together about what, what should I do? What job do I take? What state do I live in? What do I do about this relationship? And you were so busy looking at the puzzle that we, are, we don't even realize you're not even looking at the bright puzzle. You don't have all the pieces. That's like, I got the whole picture, the whole, it's like, anybody had a, I don't do puzzles. I know Kim's uh, mother-in-law does. And I think uh, other, many people do. I used to, I'm not, I don't know why I don't anymore. Probably because my eyesight's not that good. It's like, oh gosh, that would be a lot of work. Um, but if you, you take it usually and you get it out there and what do you do? You set up the picture of what it actually looks like that's on the box, anyone? Or would anyone like to have a puzzle for, like in a Ziploc baggie with no picture? But I'm telling you, that's how you're living life if you're not repeatedly and consistently and often getting into the throne room. Because only in the throne room will you see. No one wants to do the puzzle in fact, it's almost impossible. I'm sure that it could be done. I mean, come on. Everyone's like, well, I would start with the edges because you could get those borders and you might be able to get that. But you just don't know where to go. And this cannot be the way we, we live life. And this is not what God has for us. When we connect with him, when our spirit connects with the Holy Spirit, that's called getting into union with. Listen, can, I'm dealing with adults here. We can, you know, when you talk about it, when a man and a woman come together, there's a locking in that produces children. This whole, you know, boy, the world wants to pervert what God has created. It takes things like uh, sex between a husband and wife, what God created to bring forth life, and it's turned it into like this, this perversion and and, you know, at best, people want to giggle and make it seem one thing, and at worst, it's demonic and horror. Hey, listen. This is a picture. It's a picture of the mystery of when our spirits lock in with the Holy Spirit and we become one with him and we begin to see the puzzle and what it's supposed to look like. And it's your life and it's the life of people around you. And you begin to see God's all up in it. We're so busy trying to put the puzzle. I see uh, many of us and I see like a puzzle in front of me and it may be you know, just a scene of life, maybe a scene of a, a, of a garden, it may be whatever, an ocean. But every one of our pictures, I hear the, I see the Lord showing me all these pictures right now. So I don't know what your puzzle is looking like right now in front of you, the one that the Holy Spirit's showing you that you keep trying to put together. I don't see Jesus. He's like, where, you, you don't even see where I fit. You don't see where you fit. You don't see where they fit. You don't see where all of it fits together. And God is trying to get us to come into his presence. And when you do, everything just starts kind of automatically, you see it. And so the very answers that you're desperate for that are somewhat trying to keep you out of the presence. Come on, has anybody, anyone admit that you've been in, uh, you've tried to go into worship, whether it be a corporate worship or personally, and your mind won't stop thinking about that argument. It won't stop thinking about that bill or or what's coming or the, Anybody else? It just keeps coming. And you want to worship and you are, you're singing or you're trying, right? But you just are. So the best you can hope for is some worship that'll help you pacify your flesh and make you tell you it's all going to be all right. And, and, you know, and, and you get all hopeful for what you're hoping for. But I'm here to tell you when you get into his presence, it all dies and what your version of things doesn't matter anymore because you don't know what's best. Parent, you don't know what's best for your child. Now, hear me. What I'm not saying is, oh, so they're on their own, don't care. I'm telling you that you got to be willing to lay down every crown. All right, Revelation. First of all, as I mentioned, second and third Revelation shows us this, a great big picture of Jesus standing outside of the church. He's looking in. This is the church. These are letters written to churches. So much to be said about that. Letters written to churches, not unbelievers. Not people who aren't walking with. These are churches. And he, he gives them correction. Speaks to them. We hear him say at one point in uh, Revelation 3, 4, or yeah, 3, 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Why would Jesus have to be at the door of a church knocking? 
Why would Jesus have to be outside knocking? I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, once again, we've got this transcending. This tra remember transcending, we, we looked at the, de the definition and it's an overcoming. To crossing over. To him who crosses over. To him who transcends. Who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. I'm just, I want to tell you, if you think that this is just like after you die, like, oh, when I die, then I, that this is what I'm after. I want to overcome. So when I die, I can be seated with him. That is not accurate. The word of God tells us that we are seated with him in heavenly places. We are currently seated. We can overcome now. We can, we can transcend now in the spirit and sit from that perspective and view life from that perspective, v view your issues. I, I'm telling you, there's a whole bunch of us that we're missing it with all of our problems. Your problems are an opportunity for you to transcend and to begin to pull in others into the story of God, to get their puzzle piece into his viewpoint, into his plan, not yours, not yours. And that's what it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your view. You want to come up here and see? Then you're going to have to stop seeing what you're seeing. You're going to have to stop looking at what you're looking at. Stop nitpicking. Oh, tell it. Stop nitpicking at what's happening and start looking at what God is saying and what God is showing you. So we see all that happens. And at verse, I'm going to start at Revelation 4, 5. By the way, chapters four and five, these are a, this event is all together. The four and five weren't there. It's just a way for us to find our way in it. But this is one thing. This isn't like one part happens and then something else. It's all happening together. After these things. So after what things? After the correction, Lord Jesus. After the correction, Jesus just confronted, rebuked, pointed out all the deficiencies and gave them instruction of what to do. That's what God did. A couple of weeks ago, I came on strong with that that he's been talking and we're not listening message. And I felt the weight of the Lord, the correction of the Lord. And so much so that I expressed to you, I felt uncomfortable with it. It felt so heavy. Like, why are you, you know, but I can see now he's like, after this, after the correction, after the adjustments are mentioned, after Jesus helps you to see, hey, I'm on the outside trying to knock on your life. By the way, the temple I described, that's you. You're a three part, you're a body, a soul, and a spirit. Your outer court is your body. The inner court is your soul, your heart, your mind, your thinking. And the holy of holies is where your spirit, when you were born again, created a habitat for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell with you there. That's where he meets you. It's in that part of your being. You are that temple. And he's let us know, hey, you've got me on the outside. You're trying to, I'm not going to meet you in the outer court. We're begging God, come out here. And he's like, no, come in here. Come on. Go, come over here. Look what look what's happening here. And this is going on. And and that and I need you to and he's going just come on. I've rent the veil. Come in. Come close. OK. After these things, after the correction, after the things, after these things, I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, come up here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. Listen, come up here, transcend. Cross over your fears, cross over your boundaries, get over your ideas, your dreams, your goals, your plans, your whatever you think should be happening. Get over your worries, come up here. The door is open, come up, transcend. And I will show you things which must take place. What's going to happen when you step past the threshold of the kind of what we have called worship, which is not, it, it's not bad to praise the Lord and to, you know, ex listen to music. 
like that. But I'm talking about the difference when you pierce through and you are worshiping him because the, even the words are talking about him, not you. How about songs? And I love those songs too. So hear me that I'm not saying don't use them. I'm just saying don't mistake what they are and what they aren't. We need to find words, songs, worship that are worthy as the lamb. Come on. What's happening? They're seeing him. You got to get to that place where you're willing to stop looking at you and your feelings and your circumstances, that outer court stuff and that inner court stuff and start getting into the holy of holies, where by the way, there's not a lot of light in there. You can only see, and you just know he, and he is the, the light. Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Someone needs to make a note that if I will do that, if I will get myself to that place, that I will be, sh be shown what's coming. Did you hear that? And I will show you things which must take place after this. That is revelation about what's coming. And if you know what's coming, you know what to do. You know how to respond to it. You won't be taken off guard because you will understand. He's going to show you. He's not trying to leave you in the dark. So many people are like, oh, I prayed. I just don't know. Listen, he will reveal and illuminate what's next for you. You want answers about what to do? Oh, so many of you, you've been praying. Oh Lord, what about this? When's this going to happen? I need to do this. Should I do this? And he's like, stop chattering and come and worship me. And I will show you what must need, what things must take place. So you'll know why that's not happening yet because see these three things need to happen. Then we can do that. See, our eye is on what we want. True to form, the flesh wants what the flesh wants. And that's why we need to get into the throne room too, because the flesh needs to die. Anyone needs it? The flesh needs to die. The, even the part that you think is pretty good. <laughs> the good ideas, the, the God ideas, the ideas that we think are God because we put his name on it. But there's only one way to know for sure. Keep coming into the throne room. Keep bringing it in. And the fire of his presence, because our God is a consuming fire. This is who you're getting in front of. When you're in the brilliance of his presence, you know what? Your fears die. Your ideas begin to die. Everything melts away. The wood, the hay. And the only thing that's going to really last is that true gold, the gold that's of him. And even the gold, the dross will come to the surface. Like, yeah, that's what I said, but it doesn't have to look that way, Monica. Oh, okay. You know, and that gets then, okay, I don't need to, I don't need it to look that way. Because we see, we sometimes think things are not happening and they are happening. But you're so focused on the way it's happening that you don't understand that his ways are higher than yours. And so many of you have heard phrases like, you think your life is falling apart, but it's all just falling into place. So many kingdoms had to be torn down in the last three years. So many kingdoms that we built and put God's name on. So many and more are coming. Get ready. Your best bet is to do it willingly, to bring it, to bring yourself constantly before the throne so it can just all fade off and you don't have these desires to build stuff that's not from him. It's difficult. Listen, outside of that place, in that place, this is true simplicity. I am giving you the most simple and effective way to go forward. Get on this, the vessel of true worship. Find that place. Do not be kept out. The devil is a liar. Nothing can separate you from him if you will just determine that I'm going to, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find my way with this. I'm not going to accept singing four songs, even though I, and I felt a little better and think that I did enough worship that got me down the line this week. So many Christians were being held back because we thought that was worship. We thought that was enough. It is some worship, but you didn't get all the way in. You were at the threshold and you didn't come up here. You didn't cross over. And you can do that anywhere at any time. Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven. You want to know when you're in the spirit? It ain't when you start seeing things about your own life come together. It's, you need to see him. You will see him. You will see a form of Jesus, whether it be an image in your head, in your heart, 
I declare in the name of the Lord, the Lord is saying, I am about to reveal myself to you. You will see me. You will not just hear about people who saw me. You will see me. Your heart's eyes are being opened. And that was part of the prophecy that came uh, in February of 2020, that eyes would be opened, that the veil would be removed, and that you would see what you have not seen before, that you would begin to see him as Isaiah declared. And I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. You, with glory, the glory of God is coming. The glory of God is coming. The weight of his glory, I can already feel it, I can already sense it. It is coming. It is coming. And the way, let me tell you, when the glory comes though, <laughs> it ain't good for those who aren't walking with him. Do you understand that when the glory comes, people die? But if you're already dead, Charlie's heard me say this many times, you can't kill a dead person. If I'm already laying my flesh down, then nothing dies. I just rejoice and get into unity. So keep coming, get that flesh dealt with. Behold, so immediately I was in the spirit. Lord, help us to know what that looks like. Help us, cause us, oh, the Lord says, I'm causing you to transcend from worshiping me from the outer courts, which is not bad. It's not evil. So hear me. What I'm not trying to do is, is say that those seasons or those times of worship, there's an appropriateness. There's a time to be in the outer court. There's stuff to get done. There's a time to be in the inner court too. There's, there's work in the kingdom to be done. But we've got to be able to enter into the holy of holies. And how do we know? He just told us. He just said immediately, I was in the spirit. When you get in the spirit, you're going to begin to see things different. And behold, a throne set in heaven. And one, capital O, one, sat on the throne. Lord, I pray that everyone here this week will have an encounter with your throne and they will see you with the eyes of their heart, that they will see you with their spirit, that they will enter in the spirit and they will see you set on a throne. And he who was there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeding proceeded lightnings, thunders and voices. <laughs> you're going to hear things in his presence. When you get in the spirit, you're going to hear things. You're going to hear them in your heart. You're going to think thoughts going to come to you and thoughts. So when I say you're going to hear things, you're going to have thoughts that you didn't have. You know, down here in the, in the spirit, in the soul realm, in our concerns and in our worldly thinking, we have thoughts. Some seem pretty good. In fact, they, we probably think they're the Lord and I'm not saying he's opposed to them, but I don't think that they're all him. They just could be him. They sound good and uh, they line up with scriptures. They must be God. But, and then other voices are the voices of anxiety and fear and lack and, and worry and death and all the things. But see, when you get into this moment, when you get into the spirit, you start to hear other voices. You start to hear the truth. This week, and I have permission to share this, uh, a friend of mine's daughter, uh, 17, we, went, we were in an opportunity to worship, to really be in the presence of God and uh, with a group. We were worshiping, maybe it was last week, okay, it was a week ago. It wasn't this week. This week went really fast. It was the week before. And uh, God was moving powerfully. I, you know, he was speaking definitely to me. And I, I had a conversation yesterday with her mother. And she shared with me that her daughter, while we were there, really heard while we were worshiping, just Jesus began to speak to her and really dealt with something deep. That, that there was this concern, this thought, this painful thing about her life. And that in that moment, she was able in the presence of God, God came and said, listen, no, this is not that I, I gave you this. And I said this, and this is what I say. And he redirected, flipped the whole concept. Instead of it being something she wants out of her life or wants no part of, or brings pain to her, God used it and began to speak and redirect the narrative. Listen, when you're in his presence, 
the whole narrative of your life is going to be redirected by him. He redirected the narrative in, in the example of what she said to me, she said, the truth is she had like a whole full on like therapy session with Jesus in this moment, unbeknownst to everyone, right? Because we're all busy having our own. And I said, you know, it's funny. And I said this to her because she's someone has been in my life for uh, over 10 years, 11 years and walking through difficult things over these many years. And I had the privilege and the honor to be able to walk with her through these deep things, to speak into many things, because I had gone through some of those things, you know, decade before. And so God healing me in the process that he worked with me, I, I was able to partner with her over these 10 years. And I said, you know, it, I, it's interesting you say that because see, I didn't have someone explaining all these things and talking. She's like, oh, you didn't have a Monica, you know, and, you know, and the way, and, and we, and not that I'm, I'm certainly not the, I just was able to push her toward Jesus and that, but the point is I had that. I said, that's really interesting. Cause that's what I did. That's how I overcame. It was like, it gave me perspective to go, wait, all these years, like, that's exactly the deal. I had session after session, after session of encounter and there he would redirect the narrative there. He would heal there. And I have nothing against counseling except that's great, but I'm telling you, you can do that all day. And if you don't ever get in his presence, you are missing the balm of Gilead. You are missing the perspective shift shift. You are missing reality. Can I just tell you you're missing reality? Christians all over are missing reality because they have the word, but they have not encountered him they have not become mature in their connection we have must do it and i'm sure many are doing it so i'm not saying every christian i'm saying the majority of those who call themselves christians are not having deep encounter with him they're not coming to him and it's because worship the flesh really doesn't like to worship can i just tell you now once the flesh is subjected and starts to get very weak the spirit and the soul know come on flesh we know better we know this is going to be good for us Kind of, I guess, I guess, because I don't do it, uh, that people who don't do exercise, but then they get healthy. Like at first, they're like, oh God, yeah, at first it's like, never, it's not going to happen. Then they get going. And next thing you know, they're like, man, I love this. I love to walk or I love to run or I love to, and they know it feels good. My flesh feels good now. See, at first it's not like that. So some of you, I believe in this season, if you will, if you will push in, if you will hear what the spirit is saying, you're going to find yourself pushing past, oh, I feel like, I feel silly. Like I'm still doing that. Nothing's happening. You know, all the things, listen, stay, wait, expect, expect access because it's freely yours. It's been bought for you to get in there and to get in this presence and to see him, to see him and to hear the voices of heaven. There were voices, it says. I know, I don't, I, listen, I don't understand. All. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. There are voices in heaven. There are phrases from heaven that need to be released to you. Those are the voices that you want to walk out your life with. When you come out of that and you come to do the things you do, you're going to have that voice. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Again, not getting into all these details, but I'm just getting you a whole different picture, a whole different picture. You think you're just on your face on the floor in your bedroom or, in, or at your church or wherever, but that is not where you are. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes, front and back. There are creatures of heaven. I... I'm not making this up. I'm going to sound weird for some of you, but do you hear this? There are creatures in heaven that have eyes. They're full of eyes in the front and the back. I and mean, we can get caught up on what does that look like? Who cares? They can see every which way. They can see every which way. They're full of eyes in the front and the back. They see it all. They know what's happening. They know what's ha happened and they know what's coming. And these are the voices that you can hear. Some of you just can't even handle this, but we just, come on, let's get some concept here. We're living in dark days and you think you see what you see, but you don't know what's really happening unless you've been in the throne room. 
the first living creature, okay, it describes them. I don't have time to do all that, but let's just, the four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes. Once again, those eyes all around and within. Lord, help us to know these things mean things. And they do not rest day or night, saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. And whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things. And by your will, they exist and were created. Listen, Lord, help us to stop. Take a breath in this moment. And understand that you are trying to cause us to enter into the spirit realm, spirit living, a spirit formed life. I'm not just talking about when we enter in this practice of coming into this presence will cause the kingdom of heaven to lock down on your life and you will carry this everywhere you go. You will carry the kingdom. Jesus, when asked to, how to pray, he said, pray this way. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Boy, we could go on there. I don't have a lot of times. So I'm not going to, but even the directives after that, give us this day, our daily bread, right? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Some of y'all need to realize you got to let it go. Let it go. When you get into the king, the presence of God, let me tell you something. You'll let it go. I have no concerns for those of you who have struggled, as many of us have, to deal with offense, bitterness, rejection. Um, holding on, you, you're trying to forgive, you think you've forgiven and you've realized maybe you haven't. When you get in front of the throne, trust me, it'll go. Because it's there that you realize how unworthy you are. Yet there he is. When you see the magnificence, when you experience the magnificence of the one, the one true God, the living God and his son, who gave his life for you, that's seated on the throne for you. Trust me, you're real quick to realize, oh my gosh, I can't hold this against anyone. Look what I've done. Look who I, we know who we were and who we are. And we're still not worthy. At our best, we're not worthy. But yet we have free access and he calls us close. So you will overcome those of you who have been stuck in rejection and in orphan spirit, you will begin to connect. When you connect with him, you begin to be connected at such a level that it transforms your thinking and your perspective. And you realize he is worthy. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will, they exist and were created. And in that place, let me tell you, when you begin to see this reality, you also begin to realize all the things you're worried about. You're worried about Alex, Kathleen. God's like, I created all things and everything's working out from the good. Don't worry, I got this. You're worried about your son, daughter, neighbor. You're worried about what's happening. And God's like, I have created everything. And everything exists by my will. Every person exists because he created them and they're for his purpose. Many things in this life we look at and we're like, oh, that's, but that's bad. Well, even those bad things are going to be for his purpose. So when you see bad things, I'm here to tell you some of the negative things going on around you that you're thinking, what is going on? This is not Lord. This, why is this happening? Let me just tell you, trust in him, get before him and you will begin to see that he will use it. Just like we saw in, as we've journeyed through the life of Joseph, 
these terrible things, betrayals, all the things. Ultimately, God used them for his glory and for his purpose to save many, right? In the end, that's what it was about. It was about the saving of many, and it was specifically about the saving of that family. And you need to know that the same thing applies now for you. The things that are happening, and as you begin to connect with him and get intimate with his spirit, you're going to see it even at an accelerated rate, and you're going to get view that you didn't have a perspective, a vantage point on what's really going on, that puzzle, that you're going to start building a different puzzle. Some of you from this day on, if you will get on the vessel of worship, God is saying, listen, we're leaving land. We're going where we've never been. Remember, mm, in Ezekiel, there's a, there's talk about Ezekiel has a vision and he's like, and I measured out the, the water, a thousand cubits and the water was to my ankles. And then he measures something more and it comes up to his knees. Come on, you can go read this. It's a prophecy. And he says, it says that then I measured another thousand and the, the water raised a thousand more cubits and it came to my waist. And, and so he's, until finally he gets to a point where he says, and then the water was so high that one could only swim. We are at swim level waters, people. You cannot walk through. And I'm telling you, this doesn't diminish the history of God parting the water. Some of you want the waters to part. And he says, no, I said, get on the vessel. You're dog paddling. And God's saying, come on, get on the vessel. Because you're tired. You can't swim that long. We're here. I actually believe that's a, that, although it speaks, it's a prophetic vision, so it speaks on many levels, but I believe that's a measuring of time. A thousand years, a thousand years, a thousand years. A thousand years, all the way up. And we're here we are in that measured timeline where one can only swim. But see, the Lord has given us a vessel to get on. And that vessel is worship. It's the, it's the vehicle in which we will find our way forward. Like the ark that Noah built. Build an ark of worship. And, and listen, when I talk about prayer, prayer, it's all intermixed. Worship and prayer, it's all, it happens there. Because when I'm worshiping him, I get a reality of what's really happening. And I can pray in alignment with what he's showing me. And I can begin to believe based on what he's showing me, not in what's happening. You will see your loved ones. I have had incredible visions of my nephews in the last six or so weeks in worship. I've had incredible visions of, of Jesus riding on a white horse. Like every time I get into worship, I was telling my husband this, Every time I enter into this worship that we have found ourselves entering in repeatedly, I said, you know, every time I'm instantly, I begin to see like a vision of Jesus, like on a white horse with, with, you know, the crown and, and he's got like a banner and it's blowing. And, and I, I didn't know how to explain it. I said, but the horse is like big and tall. And it's like, you know, like trotting almost, not trotting, like walking, but kind of like in a battle situation where this horse would be just so regal and it's moving its legs and, and it's just so powerful and there's movement. And I realize as I'm worshiping that he's riding into my world. He's riding into your world because I, I am bringing you, you are my world tribe. You're part of my, my sphere, you know, the land, the people in my world. And I see him riding in. And so as I, and so all I can do is just keep worshiping and watching him ride in victorious, coming to conquer, coming to take what's rightfully his, to take his rightful place. And instead of me sitting on the throne of my heart, worried about what I need and what I feel and what I want, I'm able to transcend in worship to the reality that Jesus is Lord and that he is worthy to receive glory and honor and power. All my strength, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. Doing this in worship, giving him, that's how we give him the glory 
and the honor and the power, all the strength of my heart, all the words that, listen, we are powerful beings. We're far more powerful. It's not the topic for this here, but we are made in his image and likeness, which means we have incredible power through our words, our thoughts, and our words. That as we speak, things happen. As we, so as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As we think things, as we do things, as we speak things, oh. So giving him, how do you give him the glory, the honor, and the power? You relinquish all of that. When you ought to be worried, when you're like, but my child is out there on drugs. Oh, I say, get down and give God glory. And Lord, you alone are worthy. And all things are within your hands. You created everything, which includes them. You have a tapestry for life. You begin to give all your power to that to him instead of to the fear instead of to the worry instead of to the all the, i'm telling you we are releasing power when we meditate on what's going wrong we're giving glory and honor oh someone needs to hear it you are giving glory and honor to an altar built to satan I just am seeing this for the first time right now as we speak. I see the glory of heaven. I see the imagery that we were looking at. But over here to the the left and to the right, I see altars. I see ruined altars filled with fear. And and our loved ones on those altars. And when we turn to the right or to the left, and we begin to get focused, oh my God, what's happening? What's going to happen? Listen, I'm telling you, get your glory and honor moving toward the king. And he will ride in. He will ride in. This is it. We need to let thy kingdom come. Come on. Thy will be done. We can do this. We can open the portals. I I explained, I told my husband and I think Denise this week, I said, uh, now hear me. I don't know because I I might say this wrong. Dr. Strange and hear me because the last movie that they made with him in it was demonic. I went to go see it with my kids. And I was like, this is so demonic. We like, we walked out early. My husband and I were like, we got to get out of here. And I was like, okay, you guys saw it, but we won't be watching that again. Now there was a previous one and I, I get it. There's still magic in and all that. But like I said, um, he's created everything. I'm not afraid of all that. It's funny how you begin to uh, take authority over things conceptually though. So for anybody, I can't see anyone, but if you saw it, you know what I'm talking about. But there was this thing where it would open, like he would open a portal and yeah, hear me. I'm not telling you to open portals. It, well, I kind of, I'm going to tell you how to open a portal right now. I got newsflash. You're all opening portals all day long. So I'm going to teach you how to open a good portal. Um, he would like open a portal and you would see the visuals why I'm using the movie of like this circle. Like it would be like, I don't know, spark fire or something around it. And then it would like open and you would see like a whole nother location, right? Like, oh, you're here. And then like, that's like whatever, Timbuktu. And he could, they would walk over or come over and then they'd fight, whatever. My point is this. I said, lately through worship, I'm fully seeing like a portal being opened for heaven and Jesus being able to ride in and I'm able to go in and he's coming. Listen, we need to open portals, even that concept, that word. And and it's why I think God's using like the word transcend when we've got transgender is big and God's like, come on, no, stop. I own it all. Everything is mine. Speak into these things. Listen, portal, open the portal. Open the portal to heaven, to Jesus. And there's, and you want to be safe? You don't want to, listen, I'm anti-witchcraft. Uh, you got to be watching that. Don't do astrology. Don't be reading your horoscope. Don't be going to palm reading. Listen, toe the line. Worship Jesus and you will, everything's a counterfeit of the real. You understand that, right? The devil has created ways for people to open portals to hell. When you do this, you give access to the devil coming in. Burning sage. You shouldn't have to say these things, but I'm going to say it in case anybody's got something going on in their peripheral and they just don't realize. Palm reading, you know, um, manifesting, but we can manifest the manifest presence of God is all you want. But this like speaking, believing it till it comes true. No, Jesus is alive and he's real and you need to worship him. You need to bow down. You need to bow your flesh down. You need to bow your soul down, your spirit. Bow before him is not just physical, but you can do it physical. You want to bow before him? Stop worrying about the problem. Start trying to stop trying to strategize the problem. Stop trying to like list your goals. I'm not saying you can never do those things, but I'm telling you, if that's all you're doing, then you're just doing what 
the world is doing. You got nothing. Get those things bent over before him. Worship him. And I believe God's saying, what he's trying to get to you is this. Come up here and I'll show you things to come. I'm gonna show you what's next. I'm gonna show you what to do. It's direction, direction and instruction. So you stop working on the plans and projects that they're just gonna have to be torn down later. Because everything's gonna crumble. Everything that's not built by him is gonna burn. And I don't believe that's just physical, although I believe that it will possibly be physical, but some of us need to realize like that relationship burnt to a crisp because you, because it's not built the way, first of all, he didn't have it for you or it's been built wrongly. So this chapter five, which I said is just a continuance. And I saw on the right hand. So when all this is happening, right, they're throwing their crowns. What are their crowns? Their victories. The things that God, they're like, we didn't do any of this. You did all of it. We got these crowns, but we didn't do it. You did it. He delivered those crowns to them and they delivered them back. And I saw on the right hand of him, of him who sat on the throne, a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and loose its seven seals. And I looked and behold, and in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp, golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. So there's worship, there's sounds, music, harp. And prayers, we worship as we worship and we sing songs that extol his glory. Holy, holy, you're, you're praying. You're praying, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven, and on earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them, I heard saying, blessing, and honor, and glory, and power to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Goes on and on. But I'm telling you, I'm inviting you. I'm cautioning you. I'm urging you. I'm warning you. I'm whatever, wherever you are, each of you individually, whatever it is you need, you need a strong warning. I'm warning you. Get on the vessel that, that is worship. Worship that gets you to see him. I'm encouraging you if you're already working on it. Keep going. Don't give up. Stay the course. See his face. Get your access. 
I'm urging you all, don't miss this moment. This is a, a moment, it's a watershed moment that back to that year ago, three years ago, that message, I talked about a watershed moment where we would, it would no longer be ever the way it was. We're there, we're at a pivotal moment. The scale that I saw so long ago and shared that the Lord showed me a scale coming in the midpoint of the year. And it's here and it's weighing things. It's dividing things. Come on, he's dividing us. The division in the world is way more than ever, correct? I mean, would everybody agree that the division is clearer and clearer? And it's a little, many of you are very troubled by this, but I want to encourage you. No, 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 this needs to happen. I know it's hard, but we're coming to the time of the end and we're moving ever closer to it. And it needs to be so clear where you stand. Not for other people. Listen, God is watching. Those eyes from heaven are watching everything. And every decision we make is, is putting us on one side or the other. Who are we? Where do we fall on issues? And I'm not talking about needing to speak up about everything, but I'm talking about how you live your life, how you speak, how you think. And when you keep getting in the presence of God, it will help you. You won't have to change because remember the flesh is going to die. It can't stand in his presence. It bows before him for he is worthy. And your spirit hears what heaven has to say about a matter. And so then you can live out your decisions that way. There's a division coming. It's here and it's dividing good from bad. It's dividing dark from light. The division is ever clearer and we need it to be as hard as it is. Before it was like, oh, I'm not really sure. Now you, you, you need to be sure. You, you, you are sure. You just may, may be rebellious or you may be right on and you see like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that because I don't want to be a part of that. God's making the division clearer and clearer. That watershed moment came at the beginning of 2020 and began a process that has caused it to be so for everyone. The way life as you've known it is never going to be the same again. And if you find that sad, then I encourage you to get in front of the throne because you need it to be this way. We need to go forward. We need our old life and even the good things from before to be cast off. And we need to move into who we are meant to be. And there's only one way to do that. I don't think I've done a good job of expressing all of this. So I'm leaving it to the Holy Spirit. I feel so like there's still so much to say that I don't know how to say, but time and time again, we see, I want to encourage you if I can, the next two weeks, since we won't be together on Saturday. Oh, but for those of you who are aware and who, those who aren't, Wednesday, this Wednesday, the 21st will be, for those who can make it, I know many of you can't, you're going to be at work if you can't take a, if you're not local enough to take a quick little hour break or something and come, if you can, you still could, uh, or if you're off. Uh, anyways, the 21st, we're going to Reborn. I think it's in Brea called Reborn. We'll make sure to send out an email again. Uh, in Brea, we're going to just, I'm going to be there. Kim's going to be there. Hannah's going to be there. I, I know a few others have said they're going to be there uh, to have coffee and be together. Uh, so we'll see you then if you're able to make that. We have a beach thing in the uh, July, but this week we'll be together. But for two Saturdays, we will not be meeting and we'll reconvene July 8th. I want to encourage you to read this passage here. Find throne room. Become a throne room, people. I want to encourage you to read, if possible, from a physical Bible. Open up the Bible, find the passages, this Revelation uh, 4 and 5 passage where you see. Focus not on all the, uh, don't go too far beyond. I want you to, Take some time to see the throne. Another one, Isaiah 6. You know, see that one? Um, I would even, I'll send out a few others. I've, I've been thinking about uh, Ezekiel's vision, but, but those two for sure. See the throne, read it, ask God to show you what, you know, to, to help come to begin to see what happens and begin to ask yourself what happens around the throne. How will I know if I've encountered him? Does it have to be that I see a, a literal throne? Does it have to look exactly like this? It doesn't. He will reveal himself. He wants to reveal himself. But start by understanding what it does and doesn't look like. It doesn't sound like you saying a lot of stuff about your problems. It doesn't sound like you talking about how you feel. 
it begins to lead you to a place where it's him and it's Jesus focused. It's his power focused. It's his glory focused. It's what he did, who he is, not who he was even. It's not even cross focused, although it is from the sense of understanding that you were slain, but now you've risen. It's time to enter into a season of resurrection. Resurrection. This transcend series, I believe I'm in closing. I'm just going to say this. Uh, these are prophetic realities and i'm declaring to you that we have we are transcending the trend we're transitioning now into being a throne room people and what that produces what comes out of that i think we'll begin to see what does that look like when i'm outside of the worship moment what does that look like in my relationships what does that look like in business what is what happens to my finances what happens when the kingdom does come what happens when the kingdom of God locks down on your life and you live in the kingdom, you live in the throne room. What if you are, hello, like he said, you are, no, you're not that you are the temple of the living God. So if you're the temple, then the presence of God dwells in you. But see, the presence isn't a pillar of fire anymore. It's a throne room. It's a kingdom. Where, the, where Jesus has been seated at the right hand of the Father. And in him, you live and move and have your being. So if that's the case, then you are the Ark of the Covenant. That you're moving through life, every situation, every relationship. What happens to your provision? Oh, we're about to see. Come on, this midpoint of the year is we're transcending into the future. We're on the vessel moving toward wherever it is he's taking us to the promised land where you are the provision. You're so busy trying to get provision you're so busy trying to ask for things that Jesus said, your father, do not think, oh, in Matthew 6, I believe it is. He says this, don't pray like the heathen do, thinking they're going to be heard for their many words. For your father knows what you need before you ask. So pray this way, he said. And then he says, our father in heaven, don't worry about trying to pray in all your blessings what you need to do is put your focus on him. Pray this way. Our father who art in heaven, hallowed be the name. Start worshiping. Worthy is the lamb. And then he says, and thy kingdom come. Come on. We're going to get a reality of what all this is meant. What we have been taught is now going to become our experience. And we're going to see what happens to the world around us when the kingdom of God is locked in over us. And wherever we move, the presence and the kingdom and the power come. Your finances are going to change. Your relationships are going to change. Your thinking is going to change. Your bodies are going to change. The time of transcending the physical limitations. Remember, I'm closing because we're closing now and we're closing this session and on to the next, which will be a, a way forward anyways. Oh, here it is. Let's just relook at that. Transcend. We're transcending to rise above Go beyond the limits of, to triumph over negative or restrictive aspects of, or overcome, to be prior to, you're going to be ahead of, prior, you're going to be ahead of some things, you're going to be ahead of that anxiety, you're going to be ahead of that negativity, to go, to go beyond and above the material existence, you're going to live above your means by the power of God, both relationally, physically, financially, ministerially. Come on, miracles are going to finally begin to flow like they ought to through our lives because the glory is coming. To rise above or extend notably beyond ordinary limits. Come on. Father, I thank you. I thank you because you've given us your spirit. I thank you that I don't have to be concerned about what I was unable to convey, knowing that the Holy Spirit has been given to every one of these that are with us, everyone watching this recording, everyone live with us, every, every one of your people, you have given us your spirit. And therefore, we need that no man should teach us, is what the word says. But we know. So we thank you that you release teaching, you release prophecy, you release ideas and care through people 
but we each have your spirit to guide us and to lead us into all truth. And I pray that the truth about worship would come upon us and that we would, without condemnation, recognize that many of the things that we considered to be a time of worship were just scratching the surface of the outer court or maybe the inner court, but it really never brought us in to the holy of holies or the most holy place. I declare today over all of those who are hearing this message, not because I was able to well articulate it, but because the spirit of the living God is real and true and moving among us, that you are leading them in and that you will cause them to gain access to what you paid for them to have. And that is an encounter with the living and true God, the one true and living God who is worthy to open the scrolls that no one can even look at, much less open. And that they will find themselves before you. I thank you, God, that they will find their, their way there and that they will remain there. They will be with you. They will become one with you. The flesh will melt away and die out. The fears and all of its anxieties with it. And their strength and their joy and the truth about their lives will be found before you. The only one, the only one who can open the scroll of their life and show them the puzzle picture. They've had the wrong box all this time, trying to make put together a puzzle and make it all fit the way they thought it should. But you are giving them a new picture. Continue to build upon that picture for them that they might walk in it. I thank you for it. And I trust you with each of them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. And I don't know if Kim has access or not yet. So I think I'm...